We want to welcome you to our worship service. We pray that you are blessed by this ministration. Wherever you are, we pray that you are blessed. Come on, somebody, just open up your mouth and just begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, make some melodies in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for your blood. We thank you for dying on the cross for us, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless him in Jesus. I cannot explain how your love has covered me. Time and time again, grace has overshadowed me. Was your blood you gave for us? Pay the price upon the cross. You have saved me from my sins. I can praise your holy name. Holy to the Lamb that was slain for you and I. Holy to the Lamb. I was slain for you and I Holy to the Lamb I was slain for you and I Holy
Jesus. Come on, somebody just lift, it, lift up your voice and magnify his name. Jesus, you are the deliverer. You are my healer. You are my shelter.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Don't stop. Don't stop. We are in for a very long praise unto the Lord. So don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. Holy Ghost.
Jesus. Sister Claudia. Aha! That's what I love about this sister. That's how you do it. Brother, 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 brother. Hey, minister, minister. Aya, aya, aya. Give me something. Give me. Aya. Sister Comfort. Come on. Come on. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Don't temper with this girl. Fire. Lose me, 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 lose me
Lose my children. 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 Lose my praise. Lose my praise. I got to praise it. 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 Lose my marriage. Lose my soul. We gave you the praise. We gave you the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, all of the wonderful musicians. Praise us. I bless God for you so much. I bless God for the way you praise God in the midst of this crisis. Without any reservation, you have defied all odds to worship and praise the Lord. That's the kind of worship, that's the kind of praise heaven is looking for. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome, welcome. God is good. God is great. We bless the name of the Lord for this wonderful day. I'm so grateful for God. God is working great things in this ministry, and I bless God that you can be a part of what God is doing in this church, especially in this moment. And I'm telling you, we need to pray. Well, if you have your Bible, let us go quickly to the book of Romans. If you have your Bible, let's go quick. Quickly to the book of Romans chapter 12. That's Romans chapter 12. If you have your Bible, if you have your Bible. Let's see what Paul is telling us in the book of Romans chapter 12. Let's read. Therefore, I'm going to read so catch up. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Now, this is Paul speaking now. He's telling the believers, he said, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform. Do not conform to the parting of this word. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God, we thank you for the message today. We thank you for Doing something great, God. I just pray for your peace, God. I pray for your love, God. I pray that you would do something great through this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I want to talk to you today about confronting the war within your heart. Confronting the battle within your heart. Or confronting the war within your heart, however you look at it. I want to talk to you today about confronting the war within the heart. I, I believe that we are in the war right now. And the, the only way that we can survive and the only way that we can, can be successful you know, in this warfare is when we are transformed by the word of, by the word of the Lord. When you are transformed by the word of the Lord, that's the only way you can be able to confront your situations. You can be able to confront the struggles within your heart. You can be able to confront certain things that you are going through. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a war. And we need to confront 
the war that was that is within our heart. You see, most of the times we are focused on the war that is happening outside. But we are not focused on the war that is happening within our heart, with the inside. You got to focus on the war that is happening on the inside, then before you can focus on the war that is happening on the outside. Confronting the war that is within, that is happening in us. Now we see Paul is telling us, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, he said, I'm begging you. I am pleading with you to offer your body as a living sacrifice unto God. To offer yourself unto God. And the question I want to ask you is, have you offered yourself unto the Lord? The Bible tells us that we should love the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind. We should love the Lord with your body. You should love the Lord with your soul. You should love the Lord with everything that you have. Have you offered yourself unto the Lord? Because most of us, we proclaim the name of Jesus, but really our heart is far away from the way that God wants us to walk. Well, you proclaim to be a child of God, but you cannot love your neighbor. You proclaim to be a child of God, but you cannot walk in holiness. You have to confront the war that is happening within the inside, the war of racism, oh yes, the war of segregation, oh yes, the, the war of, of, of brutality, the, the war of hatred. You have to confront those things within the inside that we do not pay attention to, but we want to pay attention to what is happening on the outside, but Forgetting about the inside. Oh, the inside man. The inside man. I, I got to focus on what is happening on the inside of men first. Because I realize that this is about me, myself, and I. This is about me, myself, and I. If I can handle myself, if I can... Fight the war that is on the inside. If I can carry myself on the inside, the, the way God wants me to carry myself on the inside. If I can love from on the inside. If I can please God from on the inside. If I can walk in holiness from on the inside, then I have no problem with what is happening on the outside. But we forget about the inside and we are focused on what is happening on the outside. You have to confront the war that is happening within, with on the inside, ladies and gentlemen. So Paul is telling us to give ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. To offer yourself unto God. For this is God's will. And he go, he said, for this is pleasing to God. It pleases God whenever we can love from on the inside. It pleases God whenever we can walk in holiness. It pleases God whenever we can walk in righteousness. It pleases God when we can love our brothers and our sisters, regardless of your skin color, regardless of how you look or how she look, how he look. If we can love from on the inside, it pleases God. You have to confront the war that is happening on the inside. It pleases God when you can love your brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to go to our first point of view. Making yourself comfortable. Making yourself comfortable because you want to criticize others. Making yourself comfortable. We are so good at making ourselves comfortable as long as we don't pay attention to what is happening on the inside of us. If we can just point fingers on, point fingers at Brother Joel and say, well, Brother Joel is going through this situation. Oh, Sister Mary is going through this situation. If you can just focus on other people's problems and other people's situation, then you feel good about yourself. Then you feel comfortable about yourself. No. 
You have to pay attention to the speck in your eyes first. You have to pay attention to the dust that is within your eye then before you can remove the dust within somebody else's eyes. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I came to encourage your faith that there's a war that is happening on the inside. There's a war that is happening on the inside of the believers today, of Christians today. We want to see the downfall of others more than we want to see the success of others. <laughs> we celebrate the downfall of other people, but we don't want to celebrate when God lifts them up. As long as it is not in favor of you, then you don't want to celebrate the brother or you don't want to celebrate the sister. But as long as it is in favor of you, then you want for everybody to be happy but you. As long as I can criticize others and point fingers at other people, then I can make myself comfortable. Then there's no need for me to pay attention to my problems. Then there's no need for me to pay attention to my situation. If I can criticize other people's situations. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to confront the war that is happening on the inside of me. I have to confront the war that is happening on the inside of me. Now let's keep going. Now let's keep reading. Then, um, he said, Paul said in verse 2, he said, do not be, do not conform. He said, do not conform to the parting of this word. Do not be like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by thinking about the word of God. Be transformed by meditating on the word of God. Be transformed by walking in the ways of the Lord. Be transformed by fasting. Be transformed by praying. Be transformed by seeking the face of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul is telling us that we need to be transformed. But most of us, instead of us being transformed, we are allowing the worldly things to transform us. Now you have some Christians who behave like the people of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to confront the war that is happening on the inside. I just came today to encourage your faith. There's a war that is going on. The enemy The enemy has gotten the best of, 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 us, of us. The enemy has gotten the best of us. Now you have believers, Christians. They are moving and acting and behaving like they don't know Jesus no more. Like I was saying, as long as I can make the next man feel down about himself, feel uncomfortable about himself just to make myself feel comfortable. Then I don't need to pay attention to my situation or the problems or the things I'm going through. Because if I can criticize this man, if I can point fingers at this man, if I can Say, oh, look at this man's problems, look at this woman's situations, then I can forget about my problems and forget about my situation. No, you got to focus on the war that is happening on the inside of you. Paul said, do not conform to the parting of this word. Do not conform to the behaviors of this word. Do not conform. So the thinking of this world, do not conform to the way 
The worldly people do things. But as a child of God, because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you have to walk different. You have to talk different. You have to do, you have to do things different from the people of the world. Loving even when it is not in your favor. I want us to go to the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 27. And I just want to encourage your faith today that we have to confront our situation. And I want us to read loving when it is not in your favor. That's Luke. Chapter 10, verse 27. Luke 10, 27, right there. And this is Jesus speaking. Jesus answered. And this is the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, they asked Jesus about the Lord. And Jesus gave a parable about the good Samaritan. Coming in verse 27, Jesus said, he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is giving a parable of the good Samaritan because you already know the parable of the Good Samaritan, a man, a strange man that came and helped, a strange man that you will not consider to be a, a righteous man, a strange man that you will not consider to be a man that deserves the love of God or the grace of God. But the Bible tells us it was the Good Samaritan that came and helped this man that was beaten and left for dead. The Bible tells us the good Samaritan came and he helped this man. So Jesus was giving the parable and telling the teachers of the law that the priest came and walked by this man. Everybody came and walked by this man. But Jesus said the good Samaritan came and helped this man. Ladies and gentlemen, are you going to love even when it is not in your favor? Jesus is telling us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Are you going to love somebody? Maybe they don't have the same skin color like you. Maybe they don't talk like you. But are you going to love that person because of what is on the inside of you? Because you have the love of God on the inside of you. But you, you can love somebody re regardless of what they are going through. You can love somebody regardless of their past mistakes. You can love somebody because of regardless of the situation. You can love somebody. There's a war that is happening on the inside of the church and the church needs to wake up. People of God, we don't love like we ought to love. We don't walk in the ways of the Lord anymore. We do not walk in holiness anymore. There's a war that is happening on the inside, y'all. It's a war that is happening on the inside. So if I can make somebody else feel bad about the situation, then I, there's no need for me to feel bad about my situation. Then I can feel good about my situation. But that is wrong. You should focus on yourself. You should work on yourself before you can focus on the next person else, situ the next person uh, um, situation, before you can focus on the next man's situation or the next woman's situation. You gotta work on yourself first. 
I'm not going to make somebody feel terrible about themselves because I want to make myself feel good. I'm not going to bring somebody else's down because I want to make myself feel so good. We are seeing that within the church. We are seeing believers are coming up, bringing other people down because they want to make themselves feel good. They want to make themselves feel like, oh, I, I'm holy. I, I'm a righteous man. You, you are a sinner. You want to criticize other people, but you don't want to love them and tell them about the love of God, but you want to glorify yourself. You want to glorify yourself. Oh man, I pray for five hours. I, I can pray for six hours. I, I can fast for seven days. It's like you are boasting about yourself instead of boasting about God. That's a war that is happening on the inside. That's a war that is happening on the inside. So Paul is telling us do not conform. Do not conform to the ways of this world. Do not conform to how they do things, how they think, their reasoning. But he's telling us, be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Be transformed that I can love you regardless of my Disagreement with you on certain things, but I can still show you the love of God. I, I can still love you. Jesus came in. The Bible tells us that Jesus had compassion for the people. This is the reason why the people always came to Jesus. They, they always was running to Jesus because Jesus had so much compassion. He had so much love for the people. You say you love God, but your heart is far away from the way that God wants you to love. You do not love God. You love yourself. Because if you love God, then you will love your neighbor as yourself. But you see, we only, we only love when it is in favor of us. You only love when that love kind of benefits you. I'm confronting the wall that is within. Like Paul said, things I want to do, I, 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 don't, I do not do it. And, and, and things I don't feel like doing, I find myself doing it. I want to walk in holiness, but I see myself doing other things. There's a wall that is happening within. The heart. That's a war that is going on. Let's keep reading. And I want us to go to our next point of view. Laying down your ego. Oh, -ho. laying down your ego. Laying down your pride. Let me tell you something. God will humble you when you try to lift yourself up, when you try to get the glory, like nobody can tell you anything you think you always right. You think you are always right. You feel like you above everybody else. When God is ready for you, he's going to humble you. <laughs> He's going to humble you. And let's, let's go quickly to the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 11, quickly. Luke 14, 11. It's a war that's going on, man. So Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, for, for all those for all those who exalt themselves. Basically, if you lift up yourself, for all those who exalt themselves will be humble. 
And those who humble themselves will be exalted. And those who humble themselves will be lifted up. <laughs> you got to lay down your ego, man. You got to lay down your pride because your pride is going to kill you. Your pride is going to lead you to the weight of destruction. Your pride is going to bring you down for it. So we are going through this life and we feel like we are better than everybody else. You feel like you are better than everybody else. You can treat people however you want to treat them. You can say things to people without uh, uh, um, paying attention to them feelings, to, to their feelings and how they feel about the situation or certain things. Like, I don't care. I can say whatever I want to say. I can do whatever I want to do. God's going to humble you. If you cannot humble yourself, God's going to humble you. If you feel like, oh, man, I'm big and bad, God's going to humble you. And there are some people who have been humbled by God. If you feel like you think you are above everybody else, if you feel like you think that you cannot admit your wrongs, God's going to humble you. The Bible tells us so Jesus is talking to the Pharisees because we already know that the Pharisees were those people who always wanted to lift themselves up. They exalted themselves. But Jesus is like, come on. There's coming a time that you too will be humble. And the people that you least expect those people that you underestimate, the ones that you feel like, oh, I don't think they are holy, the ones that you call names and, and you criticize and you cannot show them love. Those are the ones that God will lift up. Those are the ones that God will exalt because they have the love of God in their heart. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a war that is happening on the inside. There's a war for holiness. There's a, there's a war to love our neighbor as ourselves. There's a war against the spirit of pride. There's a war against a lot of things that we are going through right now. But God sent me to talk to you. that you need to focus on the war that is happening on the inside. First, then before you can focus on the war that is happening on the outside, we are so focused on everything that is happening on the outside, forgetting about the inside, forgetting about how to love, forgetting about how to walk in holiness, how to walk in righteousness. So Paul is telling us, he said, do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed, be transformed, be changed by reading the word of God, be changed by meditating on the word of God, be changed by living the word of God be changed by practicalizing the word of God. You have to practice what you preach. He said, be changed by the word of the Lord. And some of us, we read the word of the Lord, but we do not practice the word of the Lord. We read the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, but we do not love. The word of the Lord said to love your neighbor, but you don't love people. You are only concerned about yourself. Got to love. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are you going to love even when it's not in your favor? Are you still going to love 
even if somebody hurts you, are you still gonna love that person? I remember I used to struggle with that. I'm like, God, how am I gonna love somebody? How am I gonna love this person, God, that's, that's always talking about me? How am I gonna love somebody, God, that, that wronged me? I, how am I gonna love somebody? And, and some of us, we ask ourselves those questions, like, God, how can I love this person, man? But that's the thing, when you understand that it is not about that person, it's about your relationship with God. It's not about what is happening on the outside, it's about what is happening on the inside, it's about your relationship with God. If I can love on the inside, that's the only thing that matters. So he said, do not be conformed to the pardon of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yes, God, I have a great plan for you. The Bible tells us that it is the will of God that we succeed. God have great plans for you. But first, it's about the inside. It's about fighting those demons on the inside. Those situations on the inside. Like I said, you know, if we could just, some people just, they just want to focus on other people's problems and forget about themselves. What is happening on the inside is, is bigger, is better. If you can win the war on the inside, then you can win the war on the outside. I, I'm going to say that again. If you can win the war, those battles on the inside, then you can win those battles on the outside. Confronting the war with, on the inside. Confronting the war with in the inside. God, I thank you for this message today. I know this is a short message, God, that you have. And this is a message that you want to speak to your people. God, some of us, we are hurting right now. Some people don't know what to do, God. Some of us, we believe in you, God, but it's hard for us to love. God, I just pray that you will help us to walk in your love, God. To walk in holiness, God. Things may not always go the way that we intended it to go all the way that we planned for it to go. But God, we know that you are still in control, God. Help us to love our brothers and sisters. Help us to behave like, to behave like Christians, God. Help us to walk in holiness and righteousness. There's a wall that is happening on the inside. There's a war for holiness, for righteousness. I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as I come to in conclusion, I told you this is a short message. And God just want to encourage your faith to work on your inside to focus on your inside, to pay attention to the war that is happening on the inside. If you can walk in holiness, if you can walk in righteousness, if you can love your neighbor as yourself, then you don't have to worry about what is happening on the outside. God is in control.
I'm telling you, God will humble you if you try to exalt yourself. God's going to humble you. And right now, God is really, 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 he's humbling some people right now. Some people are being humble right now because they want to do things their way instead of doing things the way that God wants them to do it. God bless you. I'm Pastor Joseph Cooper. I pray that you were encouraged from this message. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week.